Chris Middleton's extravaganza on the BBC in the Midlands. Uh, my next guests, I actually saw them not so long ago in the scheme of things uh, at Birmingham at the uh, LG Arena. And what a great show it was. And um, it's hard to think now that it's 40 years next year since the, uh, the the band came together. I'm talking about Shawaddy Waddy and bass player Rod Dees and drum drummer Romeo Challenger join me now in the studio. Hello, boys. Um, 40 years. Four. Where's it gone? Well, I don't think we ever thought in the first... Uh, when we first started, we'd, we'd be still around in 40 years. Yeah. I mean, playing, but... No, it's brilliant. Brilliant. Can't remember it all, though. No, no, we, you, we, there's certainly... It's a blur. I mean, to me, it's just, in, just like yesterday. So, I mean, you, I think when you're, when you're in the band of yourselves and you're enjoying yourself and doing... Um, you're in an occupation that you really enjoy, the time is just... It just flies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me take you back. The Fosway Pub... Back in 1970, black and white. Yeah. <laughs> black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Sepia. <laughs> uh, am I right in suggesting that Shawaddy Waddy was like a mix of two bands? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and the Fosway um, used to put bands on, and we we did we did the same night, didn't, didn't we? We used to do, do a Tuesday and Thursday or something. Yeah, we just yeah. decided the two bands, Choice and the Golden Hammers, to get together. Yeah. Yeah, for, well, for the simple reason, the thing is, it turned out that um, when the two bands amalgamated, um, it went down a lot better than <laughs> we did when we were doing our own gigs. <laughs> is that because there was, a, like, a more choice of, uh, of ideas and, and situations? I think it was probably just more entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Th th there, were, there were some spare, spare musicians, <laughs> and we, th th we kind of worked these dance routines out, which were quite basic at the time mm. but it was but it was entertaining it was more than just standing there listening to a band yeah i mean you can remember this is this is bang into the bang in the glam rock era yeah and you know and, and progressive music was still there and all the rest of it so everybody was all being very very serious about music and so on. it's not that well, we weren't but uh, uh, what was missing was the sort of the uh, the added entertainment factor and which, fun yet as well, yeah, yeah. which we brought back. Now, Rod, um, I remember seeing you doing a lot of dance routines um, uh, we, in the past 40 years. <laughs> Can you still do it? <laughs> um, well, there was... No, not all... No, <laughs> no well, the thing is... No, the, the question is, do, do you think you still look good with it? <laughs> is the question. <laughs> <laughs> Did we ever? Well, yeah, well, as, as young men, you think you can get away with that sort of thing. I think you yeah. can, yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you first... Um, when, you fir when you were original, if you like, two bands and you'd not yet amalgamated... Did you did you wear the gear then or not? It was something that I, I, going, it, that was actually before our time. That it was more school days. It was something, an image that we remembered. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Mount was probably instrumental in suggesting that we got some drapes made because he was a bit older than us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was just a, it was just an image really. But we loved the music. It, but as Rose said, it was it was the days where people. Uh, got changed into the scruffy jeans to go on stage and right. passed it, and people were actually beginning to um, put proper stage clothes on, and it was just something that we... Yeah, I mean, uh, I actually remember uh, quite vividly when um, there, was, there was a gig in Leicester called the Il Wondo, and uh, in the early days you'd have people like The Who and Eric Clapton and, and all those all these acts all turned up, but looking quite well, relatively smart. Yeah. And Get changed into scruffy jeans.
Waddy Waddy. I wonder why. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Jimmy. And a chat to Rod Dees and Romeo Challenger, two of the original members of the band. More from them in just a sec. And uh, we were asking the question, what do you remember about the 1970s? And Sue Boilu said, Keith, I remember when we used to phone 141 and listen to the hit parade. <laughs> I remember that. Um, and taking pop bottles back as well for the deposit. Oh, I was a bit naughty, me, when I was young. Can't tell you that story because um, the police might come and get me. Um, Keith, I sent an email to you, but uh, it's got out-of-office response, so I'm sending this to Sue instead. Oh, I've done it. I've done it. I've put it right. Hi, Keith. Love listening to the 70s music while uh, tackling a huge pile of ironing. You and Sue were talking about cameras and films. Do you remember Polaroid cameras? The ones that used to go... And it used to come out at the bottom, didn't it, and develop itself. And um, there was, like, the little bit of like gooey developer in the in the bottom end of the the little bit of film there. I do remember that. Any chance of some more Mark Bowlin on the show? Vicky in Orlando. Vicky, I think there may be. Talking of pictures, yeah. Um, Sue Balu has posted a picture in Keith's Corner. Okay. When she met Dave Hill back in 1975 at the airport. Oh, we'll have a look at that. All right. Mm. Facebook.com slash Keith's Corner. Yeah. Then we need to click on a link, do we? Yeah, the events link to the, the 70s extravaganza. Click on the events link and then click on the 70s. Ed- yeah, and just go down the page and you'll find this great big photo. We'll have a look at that. Close-up of Dave Hill. And Diana Smith said, uh, hey, Keith, uh, give us a mention. I had the privilege of having lunch with Meryl Osmond in Leeds during the gala weekend. <gasps> you manage better than I've ever managed. Anyway, uh, shorty waddy. Um, having spent time in Malta and Scotland, I asked Rod what brought him to Leicester. Dad's job. Okay. Um, in fact, I was a bit of a gypsy when I was growing up. We, we only lived anywhere for three years and we moved on. Um, it was quite. I just thought it was normal at the time, but I, I, and six years I spent in Malta. Yeah. How did that? I mean, as a kid, that must have affected your schooling. I don't know. You, you, I think he's just yeah, he did. He's, he's not very bright. <laughs> 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 You're getting slower. <laughs> that must have affected your schooling. Duh. Next question. <laughs> What's a school? <laughs> yeah, What's a school? And Romeo, your uh, origin is Antigua. Yes, Antigua. Yeah. I mean, really, I've, I've never been to Antigua, but I have been to the Caribbean and mm. the beautiful surroundings and beautiful scenery, etc. And then you end up in Leicester of all places. Yeah. Well, I had no option about it as well. Like what? Well, my parents moved away, but I mean, like they came to England um, to study, actually. Yeah. So um, my, my my father was in sort of uh, in the medical side of things, and my mum was a, a typist in an office, so she, you know, secretary and stuff like that. But um, no, I mean, obviously, I've, I've been back to Antigua a few times over the past years, and. Um, it is lovely, but, uh, you know, I still like living here. I mean, the ideal situation probably be, to, you know, half the year in England and half the year in the Caribbean. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? That eh? would be nice. I'd love to do that. If you get, ever get a chance, I'll come with you. <laughs> now, you, you're the... The room's already booked. <laughs> <laughs> Romeo, you play the drums, so um, normally when a, a band is set out on stage, the drummer's right at the back. Correct. And you just look at them making fools of, of themselves in front of you. You bought your first set of drums... For twelve quid, I hear. That's right. That's right. That's right. And and I, I seem to. I bought it for. I mean, it's, having said that, you mean I'm talking back in 1962. Yeah. Now, twelve pounds in 1962 was a lot of money. How did you okay. get the money? Well, I, I did a paper round. All right. I had a. Uh, I had to. I had to do. I had to do a paper round to get the money to do. You know, to sort of finance a drum kit. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's one of these things that you. Need, I had the worth ethic, ethic, even at that age. Yeah. Why the drums? Why was that your chosen instrument? It was just something I was just drawn to. I, I, I never, ever, ever wanted to be a singer or guitarist. Never, never even, I've ever thought of it. It was, you know, it was just something that just the rhythm, you know, the sound of the drums or something like that is that... And I could, even before I actually sat behind the drum kit, I could always tap out a rhythm. I mean, in time. You know, everybody can tap out a rhythm, but 
you know, is it in time? I don't know. You yeah. know, just put it to metronome and you find out. But that, yeah, the drums was something I always wanted to do. Now, the lead singer for countless years is, uh, or what is Dave Bartram, yeah, who's, Dave. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I spoke to Dave not so long back and we did a bit of an interview about his book and he obviously decided to leave the band when he did. How did that affect you guys as a, as a working outfit? Well, we, I mean, we'd been together for so long, we, we're like a family, uh, and it was quite, it was quite worrying to lose such an important part of the band. But, yeah. but it was Dave's decision, and, and, you know, as friends, we all went along with it. But, I mean, the lineup we've got now is surprisingly um, good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We've actually got four, four new members. Well, Paul's been with us for four years. Four years now, yeah. But three others, and, and it's, it's working really, really well. Many, 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 many thanks for your calls and your texts and emails. Keep them coming. A lot of people saying you've been to see Shawaddy Waddy and the Fantastic. And not so complimentary about David Cassidy. Oh. Hi, Keith and Sue. Uh, uh, body in Tipton. When I was uh, a kid in the 70s, we played a game where you'd knock on somebody's front door and run away. It was called Postman's Knock. <laughs> now it's called Parcel Force. <laughs> Lucky. Uh, um, uh, let me see now. Debbie in Coventry. Hello, Debs. Uh, Keith, I think your song is... Mm -mm -mm -mm. You're right. Love the Osmonds. Need more. Let me get the lyric. Where's the lyric? Here we go. Uh, get the song um, from here. Uh, Catch a bright star and place it on your forehead. What's the song? Big song of the 70s. What is the song? Catch a bright star and place it on your forehead. Uh, Keith, brilliant music. Love Slade. Memories of the 70s. Hot, hot summer in 1976. Any chance of sticks? Martin in Canuck. Ooh, maybe pushing it, Mark, but we'll try. Uh, Keith, love the show. Love these Saturday nights. Thank you so much from Sheila. Um, uh, let me see now. Just going down the list now. Keith, we used to uh, sing at school in the 70s a song 
called um, The Golden Cockerel Crows in the Morning. Wake up, children, here comes the day. Do you have that song, please? I'd like to hear it again. Dean in Walsall. Whoa, that is a... Oh, that's a challenge and half, Dean. Um, I don't know. We can have a look. We can only have a look, can't we? Uh, Martin from Wiltshire. Hello, Mart. Hello, Keith and Sue. Thank goodness you're back. And the Olympics are over. Great shows. Thank you. If you want to text the show, 81333, 81333. Start your text with the word Midlands and it'll, it'll get through. And standard text charges apply. Rod Dees and Romeo Challenger uh, from Shawadi Wadi. Um, how do they go about choosing the new members of the current lineup? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've auditioned a few people. It was just, just a case of finding the right, the right musicians, the right personalities. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I mean, ironically, um, two of the members, um, Andy Pilos and Paul Dixon, actually had been played in a sort of a, a shawadi wadi type band previously anyway. Right. So, the, 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 you know, they, they, they knew what it was all about, they knew the songs and all that, so they fitted in quite well. Andy Pilosh was a singer in this sort of a, kind of a shawaddy waddy well, Malcolm's band. Malcolm, yeah, yeah, Malcolm's called, band. Called the Teddies, yeah. The Teddies, yeah. yeah. He, was, he was a singer then. So, I mean, really, the, 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 there was just two people who really needed to fit in quite well, and that was um, the keyboard player, Dean Loach, and uh, Rob Lewins, who plays, actually, drums, Sings and and plays guitar as well. Plays everything. He plays everything. So he's the what you would call a triple threat. He's versatile <laughs> as an egg. You never know where he's going to be. You keep tripping over him. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, th I suppose the catalyst that did it for you guys was new faces. Now, uh, remembering when I, I, I spoke to Dave uh, not so long back, you didn't really want to do it. Is that correct? Well, we didn't. We didn't realise. And the, the truth is, we didn't actually realise at the time that it was that it was a talent show. Yeah. We, we just thought we were going on the television. The mm. management said, you're doing this, blah, 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 and off we went. Um, I mean, it, it, it did, actually, it's a big favour. It did, I mean, uh, yeah, as Rod said, we didn't know, but, I mean, when we found out it was going to be a, tam a talent competition, I mean, we, we, we kicked up. Yeah. But then, but then again, you know, our management, you know, said, well, you've, you just think about it, new faces, TV, you're going to have uh, millions of people, you know, watching, you know, it's great exposure for a band. I mean, you, you, that sort of... Uh, the uh, proposition you just couldn't turn down. Not at all. And um, you actually won the, um, the the series, didn't you? But mm -hmm. came, came runners up in the all winners That's final. Right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. What <laughs> what sort of doors did it open for you? Well, we got a, we got a record deal out of it, for, for, which is probably the main the main thing. Yeah. I mean, as soon as we went on television, I think because. It was different. It created a lot of interest. Mm. Well, I mean, that, that's what those talent shows are great for. Yeah, you could remember. Yeah, I mean, I tell you how 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 it was. Remember, in those days, there would have been four channels: BBC One, BBC Two, yeah, IT. Well, three channels then, wouldn't it? Yeah, Channel Four hadn't started, oh, had it? No, no. So really, anybody was looking at television, in, and you know, if you were on a sort of a, a popular show. Everybody saw That's it, right. and it was a Saturday night as well, wasn't Every, it? Yes, absolutely. So it was a traditional Saturday Saturday night audience, and it was massive. You know, twenty odd million yeah. regularly. You know, S same with Top of the Pops. I mean, everybody everybody watched it. Yeah. Well, the fortieth anniversary tour, the uh, the gigs that um, affect our transmission area, uh, start off uh, on the fourteenth of December, Wolverhampton's Wolfram Hall. Uh, you're in Llandudno on the 15th of December. Yep. Uh, then you move into next year, Cardiff St David's Hall in January. In March, Monmouth's Devoy Theatre. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, let me see. The 15th of March, you're Leamington. Then 26th of April, Banbury. Uh, 4th of May, Swindon. You come to Lichfield, Hereford, Southport, Rill and Redditch, to name but a few. That's going to take mm. you through till the end of May. All the details of the uh, the tour and the venues are on all the W's, shawaddywaddy.net. Correct. That's correct. How yeah. come, and who came up with the name, shawaddywaddy? Nobody actually claims to have chosen that. I, I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really sure how, how, how it went down as well, but, I mean, we, uh, I can, we can tell you... You know what? What it's all about, Shawadi Wadi. I mean, the, the Shawadi Wadi thing came up is, is the fact that okay, we were interested in sort of um, old school rock and roll fifties and stuff. Yeah. And um, into do what music as well. Yeah, yeah. Because then a lot of the backing lines used to have strange words in them, like shoe shoe what 
people. Oh, so it's from the shoe wop, yeah, shoe wadi wadi shoe that, wop. That, 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 oh, I see. Yeah. 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 It's all coming to me now. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all more makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to talk to you. Can I uh, can I say congratulations first of all for making forty years? Oh well, yeah, yeah and, thank you. Um, and the fortieth anniversary tour with all those dates all in and around the Midlands. Shawadiwadi dot net. Shawadiwadi dot net. Rod Dees and Romeo Challenger from Shawadiwadi. Good luck with the future, boys, and thank, thank you. you. It's che been, been a pleasure. Cheers, likewise. Yeah, what 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 Almost ten past eleven. Don Powell of Slade still to come on the show.